Ooh, look at that. This is something, guys. Don't do this at home. Come to my home and do this. This is smoked coconut oil, which is only for these guys in the Gosney studio. I'm Karan Gokhani from Hopper's Restaurants in London. Today, I'm doing a recipe that kind of combines a little bit of South India, a little bit of Sri Lanka. It's super easy to do at home, and I do it with a cauliflower. A very, very underrated vegetable. It's a really nice centerpiece. People always think about, you know, big, large chunks of meat. Whereas this, if you're having a vegan meal or if you've got a vegan guest coming over, this is it. You want to try this out because it's gonna really wow them. So first off, trim the leaves off. I wanna leave the little leaves, big ones you don't really need. And then just cut over there to give yourself a nice flat base. That's done. And now, the marination. So for that, some coconut oil. Now good coconut oil will always set like that. Will have that beautiful smell. There are some brands out there that just take the smell away, but that's no good because you want that smell. It's like good extra virgin olive oil. South Indian food, Sri Lankan food, we cook a lot of it with coconut oil. It's super healthy. It sets a bit like butter. A Little bit of chili powder. So if you don't have South Indian Sri Lankan powder, use unsmoked paprika. Curry leaves, fresh, always fresh. If you've got the dried stuff, just chuck it because it tastes nothing like the fresh stuff. Really, really essential ingredient in the food from that region. Minced ginger, minced garlic, good amount of salt in there. Because remember, that's a lot of that will just get into your cauliflower. So you're actually seasoning the cauliflower with this. And then kalupol. So kalupol is great spice that I first discovered in Sri Lanka. It's a combination of toasted chilies and coconut and a few other spices. You roast them till they go really, really dark. One of the magic ingredients in here is rice. So you actually take rice and you toast it till it goes nutty brown. It has a beautiful flavor. And then grind all that together to create this. So that's your spice coconut oil. Think of it like a spice butter you're gonna to use to roast your cauliflower. Ah, oh, that's just incredible. And it's like no spice mix or no curry powder I've ever smelled before. Now, get yourself some foil, get a little tray. The reason I'm doing this is because we're cooking on live fire and I love that smell of the wood. So what we're doing effectively is putting a little bit off this. We're gonna save some for later. Just stick some on top here, spread it around. It will melt and it will drip. So don't worry about getting too fastidious about getting everywhere. And then just give it a wrap. You don't need to wrap it too tightly. It can be fairly loose because you want that little bit of steam in there. So I've just wrapped that up. I've left a little bit of space around. And now I'm going to lift that and stick it into the dome. So while your cauliflower is roasting in there, we're going to make a quick curry sauce because that's going to go on top of the cauliflower. So this is one of my favorite Sri Lankan curries. It's called a kiri hodi, which translates as a milk curry. And it's dead simple to make. It's really, really effective. First off, coconut oil. One of the big sort of restaurant tips I can give you is use the right amount of fat. If you need to brown your onions or if you need to cook off various ingredients, using a little bit of fat less is just gonna mean everything sticks to the pan. It just doesn't taste as nice. You wanna be able to extract as much flavor from every single ingredient in your curry. The hard spices, they always go in first. You wanna add the spices into oil as opposed to adding it into a liquid. So first off, I'm gonna add my cinnamon stick, Sri Lankan cinnamon, nice, beautiful rolled cinnamon, just going in there. That cinnamon is now gonna really infuse into the fat. And all that coconut oil is gonna taste off cinnamon. It's gonna be delicious. Next off, black mustard seeds. You wanna hear them pop just like that. Fenugreek seeds, very important to this curry. Lovely, lovely aroma, lovely flavor, a little bit of bitterness, but also this amazing sweetness. I've always struggled to explain what fenugreek seeds taste like to people until I heard someone say they taste of maple syrup. And I thought, that's nuts. That doesn't taste of maple syrup. But actually, when you smell them, it's, it's got this uncanny similarity to maple syrup. It tastes nothing like it, but that's probably just the, the aroma. You've got to buy them. You've got to use them in this recipe and find out what they taste like. I'm going to go in with the onions. It's just simple sliced onions. I've used red onions here. A tip I always have with onions is when you add them in, just add a little bit of salt. You don't need to season the dish at this stage. Just that little bit of salt helps draw the moisture out and helps the onions cook evenly. Now this recipe doesn't need your onions to be browned completely. It just needs them to be softened out 
and once that's done, that's great because there will be hole in the curry. So now I'm going in with garlic. So that's about a clove and a half, just minced. People talk about whether you should add garlic first or onions first. I always say onions go in first and garlic on top because garlic is a lot sweeter and ends up caramelizing a lot more so they, it burns a lot faster. So effectively it needs less time to cook. At the same time, I'm gonna add my chili. So I'm just using a dried red chili here. This is something you get in the supermarkets here. You get the Sri Lankan or South Indian versions. If you do find those, use those. I'm not breaking it up. Remember, most of your heat of the chili is in the seeds. And for this curry, I didn't want it to be super spicy, so I've not broken the chili up. You can if you like. I'm just gonna leave it whole in there. So the flavor comes through, but the spice stays within. And then two very, very important ingredients. Curry leaves, fresh, always fresh. And then an absolutely essential ingredient for this curry, goraka. So goraka is a little bit like dried mangosteen, similar to tamarind, but a lot smokier and has a very, very unique flavor. This is not the easiest ingredient to find in the market, but a lot of Asian grocers, a lot of Sri Lankan grocers will have them. And once you get your hands on them, just keep a bag in your, in your larder because they're gonna last forever. I'm gonna add that in there. I already get that beautiful citrus smokiness, a unique flavor that just takes me straight to Sri Lanka. Finally, a little bit of turmeric in there because that's gonna give your curry that delicious golden hue. That's gonna take all of five seconds. You don't wanna overcook it because it's gonna burn very quick and then coconut milk. Now look at that curry, it's just gorgeous. At this stage, you don't wanna boil it too much. You don't want that coconut milk to get overheated. You want that freshness from it. If you're using fresh coconut milk, if you boil it, it might even split. So you don't want that to happen. Just season it and just let it come up to temperature. So that sauce is bubbling away, it's gorgeous. Smells really, really lovely. Just gonna check if it's seasoned. Mm, love it. Just gonna move that to the side. Check on my cauliflower. So that's been cooking for about 15 minutes. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Use a knife. Let's check through. Slipping straight in, that means it's nicely steamed at the core. Now just to get a little bit more color and flavor on that, I'm just gonna open that up, that spiced oil. There is a little bit of that on top. And now that just goes back in with a bit of a flame on. So there we have it, roasted cauliflower, beautiful golden color on top, thanks to the coconut oil and kalupol, and then our golden kirihodi curry sauce. So all I'm gonna do is lift this off gently. If you wanna be indulgent, I always wanna be a little more coconut oil just on top. It's gonna roll all the way down and just give this that extra coconutty hit. Flame baster. <laughs> that is just a little kiss of fire. Kiri Hodi. And then finally, if you want some more some fresh curry leaves, or you can fry them, you can chop them up. I just love curry leaves, so any excuse to add some more to it. Now guys, just look at that. You've got coconut oil, you've got kiri hodi, you've got goraka, you've got chili, cinnamon, it's unbelievable. Now I cook meat all the time and I love meat, but is anyone gonna say no to that? I don't think so. This is really the centerpiece of a beautiful, beautiful feast. Mmm. Perfect. Still crunchy, but fully cooked through. All those flavors, amazing. I can't wait for you to try this. That's my wood roasted cauliflower along with a golden kirihodi, all done in the Gosni Dome. For the recipe, check out gosni.com. <laughs>